Let's make Hawaii sustainable. This is Think Tech. We care a lot about that. I'm Jay Fidel, and we have two other people here in the studio that care gobs about that. They have dedicated their lives. David Vogel and Tace Vogel, Tace Lopez Vogel. Yes. <laughs> Is that right? Don't forget that. Okay. And together they are Volo Foundation. Get it? Volo Foundation. Which is, you know, since we met David, what, two, three years ago, the foundation has increased by huge dimensions. We're so happy to have you here. You are great participants in our programming and you're a supporter of our programming, your Volo Foundation. Yes. Thank you so much. So say hi. Thank you for having us on the show, Jay. Really yeah, thank you, that. and it's an honor for us to be here uh, in oh, Europe. It's an honor to have you. So tell us about Volo Foundation now as it stands, because you guys have grown you know, enormously in the past two, three years. Um, you have you told me 38 programs, or 30 programs, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Correct. 38 next week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the pace will grow, yes. <laughs> Can you talk about it? Uh, well, it's great to collaborate with so many other programs. Uh, we've uh, we focused our strategy over the, uh, over the last year uh, to focus on, on, on public awareness and, and really focusing a lot on the state of, of Florida uh, where we live. Uh, and Florida is probably the most, the, uh, uh, most uh, um, vulnerable state to climate change. Uh, we we, a lot of, we get witness sea level rise and, and, and increasing hurricanes. And so we really want to increase the awareness there so that, uh, that the Amer the the public, the general public knows uh, that we need to change our policies uh, to fix the problem. That's what we want to do too, raise public awareness. This is a major issue. I was telling you, telling you before the show that we have, we have regular, regular uh, interviews with the uh, journalism faculty at UH Manoa, and they agree that climate change is the single most important issue of our time. Everything else is secondary to that. You guys totally recognize that. So I guess the question is, um, you know, why, why, why do you care so much about this? You care a lot about this. You put a lot of time and effort into this. <laughs> why? Because I have six kids and they are my life. And they are the force, the driving force behind everything I do. And we have to preserve a future for the kids. That is my main reason. <laughs> this takes me to the Juliana case, which was on 60 Minutes uh, only a couple days ago. Amazing. Which was really, was really striking case, uh, Juliana versus the United States. It was filed before the Trump administration, but it seems to have greater relevance now in the Trump administration. Uh, it was filed in 2015 with the Obama administration. And that tells you that this is not a partition partisan issue is not red or blue. It started in 2015 is a group of kids uh, suing the United States government and what they want is the court to block the government to, to keep working with the fossil fuel because this is creating climate change which is affecting their lives, their liberty and their, their future. So it, it is amazing of all the major things that are in the federal courts, this is a more I would say is the most life-changing issue. If they win, the government will have to stop subsidizing fossil fuels, and they, have, they will have to reduce emissions in, in unbelievable um, numbers. So it is, at the beginning, nobody even thought it was going to uh, go forward. They tried to dismiss the case twice, and they couldn't. So it finally passed, and it's going to trial, but the Trump administration now has tried five times to appeal. They have amazing amount of evidence. And they say, if we go to trial, there is no one stopping yeah, them. Yeah, in 60 Minutes, there was a, it was a shot of the evidence. And there were binders mm -hmm. that were like eight inches, eight inches deep, a room full of these binders. Yeah. So you understand that. You went to MIT. By the way, you sound like a lawyer. I'm way. an attorney. That's, that's why you sound like a lawyer. I love and this those is cases. an issue that requires lawyers. You yeah. know. <laughs> but it also requires computer guys, numbers guys, David. And that's where you come from. You are, you are MIT uh, data, uh, computer science. Uh, and you understand about those binders that are eight inches thick. Yeah. Well, well, it's important to show that the, the evidence is driven by data. It's not just you know, my opinion or, or her opinion. I mean, the data shows, I mean, irrefutably, uh, that humans are causing global warming, and that's causing severe economic impact. Yeah. So, I mean, and you're, you, you know, your organization, Volo Foundation, is really directed at getting the data and presenting the data 
to people who make policy, people who can affect change. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? I mean, Completely. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to be different from others because we are data driven. And that, I think, is what uh, make us unique in what we do. It's not about an opinion. It's not somebody said. I mean, there is a saying without, an op without data, you're just someone with an opinion. And we want to we wanna have the data behind uh, everything we say, everything we, we expect people to believe is because it's science proven. Yeah. And Dave is a, an, an amazing da data predictive modeler. So he, he is a renowned uh, person on this. So. I think they, they'll believe someone like him. Yeah, so it's not just presenting to uh, policymakers, it's presenting to voters. Um, because, uh, because voters, we, we need that in order for policymakers to change the policies, voters need to understand too that that's important policy. Um, because we're all about strong economy. I mean, both Democrats and Republicans believe we want a stronger economy, it's the number one issue. And when they rank climate change you know, down number 10 on the list, what we're trying to show is is the climate changing is the most harmful thing to the economy that there is. We, we sit here and we save maybe two cents a kilowatt hour by getting natural gas instead of solar energy. Meanwhile, then that, that carbon in the atmosphere is charging 12 cents a kilowatt hour in damages. That makes no economic sense. And, and it's just driving, by, by being in denial about that, it's just driving our econ economy further and downward. Especially in Florida, I think po uh, politicians have failed the public, and uh, we are one out of the 13 only states that haven't even set goals on energy, on renewables. I mean, Hawaii is amazing. Hawaii set their, their standards way, way back when. But uh, Florida, Florida should be a pioneer. We should be driving, especially in solar energy, and we're not. Yeah. So we need, we need politicians that really, really don't fail the public, the voters, but the voters have to speak up. Well, I mean, it's re sort of ridiculous. I mean, I th the essential point is that, if, um, that climate change will destroy the economy. And if you don't have an economy, well, what's the purpose? <laughs> it's really a terrible result. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the, you know, the uh, uh, overarching effects later, but let's talk about the data you've accumulated, because you had certain data when last we met. You've been mm -hmm. updating that data. You've mm -hmm. had achieved it from many sources. We have some slides where you can give people a general idea, a summary of the data you've collected. Why don't we go through those slides yeah, now? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. So what's this? <clears throat> uh, so this, this slide uh, presents just very simply uh, what carbon dioxide does for us. Uh, you've got the Earth and the Moon roughly the same distance from the sun, uh, 92 million miles, only a few hundred thousand miles apart and a difference in 62 degrees um, average temperature. And the whole reason is that it's been known for 200 years that the whole reason that we're 60 degrees warmer than the moon is two trillion tons of carbon dioxide. Um, so that's been a well-known fact amongst scientists, physicists for, for many years. Um, what we've added uh, as humans using fossil fuel, burning fossil fuels is an additional one trillion tons. So, uh, that so it doesn't really take a ro rocket scientist to understand that if two trillion tons makes a difference of 60 degrees, then an additional one trillion tons is going to be significant, and that's going to cause another six degrees of warming, of which we've already seen two degrees of that. And humankind is at the root of this, and and it's so easy to prove that because you can take that one trillion tons and you just look at the uh, energy reports as I manage a hedge fund. We look at oil inventory numbers and we. We go through 35 billion barrels of oil a year. Um, you simply multiply that by 200, the weight of a barrel of oil, um, and you can easily, over, over the several decades, show that every molecule of that one trillion tons is attributed to fossil fuel emissions. It's really just basic arithmetic, no complicated yeah. physics there. Some people, I mean, this is really important. Uh, some people think that the humanity is too small, that its effect on the planet is too small to actually affect these changes. But they're mm -hmm. wrong. Humanity has a huge effect on the planet and is having a huge effect on the planet. And will increase that effect if we don't do anything about the planet. What would you add to David's remarks? I would say that like Greta Thunberg, the Swedish activist, she was one person sitting in front of the parliament for days and days just asking for action on climate change. And this girl in one year, as she started attracting the media 
in, in one year, she, she has mobilized over a million and a half kids to do the school strike every Friday for action on climate. Good. So if one girl can do this, tell me about the population of the earth. We are causing climate change and we have the tools to reverse it and we have the tools to stop it. We just have to act. Like she says, one of her, I think the, the most amazing thing I've heard her said is like, when your house is on fire, you don't, you don't talk about it. You don't sit down and talk about it. You act and our house is on fire. We should act now. We have the IPCC report giving us 12 years. We have all the governments of every country. They have to act. Stop talking. Absolutely. Let's go to the next slide. As it unfolds, so to speak. <laughs> uh, and this is something uh, we derived at ourselves from Bola Foundation. It does, it's actually very consistent with the, with the um, IPCC report. Um, and what the physicists say, um, but using basic, um, uh, actually high school level physics and chemistry equations, you can show that, that we have we've experienced two degrees of warming. Um, it actually fits the model of, of warming, if you, if you actually model out the uh, carbon dioxide per year. What are and the years on that chart? Um, and it, it actually goes from, uh, <clears throat> from the beginning of the curve is, is basically, basically the late, 1900, late um, 19th century, um, industrial Revolution, we started burning fossil fuels, and because we keep increasing the level of CO2 in the atmosphere, it accelerates the uh, change in temperature. And so we, the, the blue dots are the actuals, and the line is the projection of our model, and you see we've got another 15 years until the next one degree of warming. And the, and the, and the slope of the chart, the upswing of the chart, logarithmic, no? Um, and it's... It's uh, ex right. It's logarithm. It's exponential, actually, exponential. Um, and um, and it's only exponential because we keep increasing the CO two. It would be more linear if, if the CO two were were constant. Every man, woman, and child has to know this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, specific to hurricane data. I mean, from Florida. Uh, just looking at hurricane damages alone, when we talk about, okay, a few degrees seems like a small thing. Um, when you actually look at the relationship, that, that top left graph, uh, the relationship between uh, temperature of the water and hurricane frequency. Um, so hurricane season, that's actually defined as, as between May and November, uh, because that's when the water is over 80 degrees. Wait a minute, we're, we're in June. Yeah. That's between May and November. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so we are in hurricane season. We've got water just hitting 80 degrees. Um, September is typically the, uh, the warmest uh, water, and we see typically 84 degree water, and that's why we get the biggest hurricanes. Um, so a couple of degrees is the difference between a, a Category 1 and a Category 4 storm. Is that exacerbated in an El Nino year? Um, uh, yes, I mean, the El Nino will cause the natural fluctuations, but, but the warming will, just in, in any condition, accelerate the likelihood. I explain it to regular, like, to people that don't understand the data, like when you have fever, at two degrees in your body makes you feel miserable. You bet. Right? Yeah. So people think, oh, well, one, two degrees is not so much. What happens when you go from 97 to 100? You have fever. You have Huge to go effect. to the hospital. Yeah. That is the effect. You guys are studying all the effects. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has an effect on all of this planet and all of the life on this planet and everything that happens. And all the, the things that people, uh, when you ask people that are going go to go vote, what are their major subjects that they want their candidates to talk about? They talk about immigration. They talk about terrorism. They talk about economy, everything, absolutely everything is caused by climate change because people are going to have to mobilize. They're going to have to, some islands are, as we speak, sinking, Jakarta, Maldives. So those people are going to have to move and it's going to cause immigration in other countries. Yeah. It's, going to come, it's causing immigration already here in yeah, the United States. Immigration into Europe. 
In it, fact, the migration from South America over here is, is, is and because they don't they don't have the same climate they had before. Agriculture has been agriculture has been has been affected, so they don't have anything to eat. They, the the coastal uh, zones have been because of the sea level rise. They don't the fishery. Everything is affected by it. Even terrorism. The the Syria war, war was named by the, the UNESCO, I think, was named by a water war. It was caused by a natural effect. So those are the things That's that people have to understand. Really that everything is example. driven. Mm -hmm. So you could draw a line from climate change to a lot of trouble in the world. Absolutely. And everything. the more climate change you have, the more trouble. I'm getting a headache. Can we take a short break <laughs> and come back and, right. and, and readdress these issues? <laughs> right. That's David Thank Vogel you. and Tace Lopez Vogel, Thank right here from Bolo Foundation. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Okay, if you didn't guess it before, we're talking about new numbers in climate change. Uh, with David and Tace, and they are the principals of uh, Bolo Foundation. We are happy to have them here. So we have more slides. We're talking about data because you guys are driven by data. And indeed, data is fact. It's not mm -hmm. alternate fact. It's real fact, by right. definition. Okay, let's, let's look at some of the other slides. <clears throat> okay, uh, the important graph here uh, is on the right. It's showing who's paying for all the damages of the increasing hurricanes. So we got, <clears throat> I got on the show two years ago, and you've predict, had three shows with us. Um, yeah. That's that's correct. Yeah. And predicted uh, the the bigger record hurricanes are coming, and now we've had two years of of, of record breaking hurricanes, um, strongest storm ever to hit the Panhandle last year, and Carolinas had devastating damage. This graph shows who's paying for it, and the insurance companies have gotten smarter, they're privately owned, they've, they've, have, they've, they've sort of stopped insuring, um, you know, providing flood insurance. Or find a way not to pay um, for it. <laughs> and so when you look at this graph here, look, the, the, the taxpayers have gone from 30% from up to now 50% of the cost. So we, when we come up with these aid packages, I mean, it's coming out of everybody's wallet. So we talked about the economy being affected, um, maybe saving a few cents on, to go with natural gas, but we're paying now $50 billion yeah. packages um, to fix these basically what we call man-made hurricanes. Yeah, that, and that will affect disposable income and thus the economy. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What's the next one? And this uh, illustrates how, how the, the sort of risk that fossil fuel companies incur because in other industries uh, where they've withheld the truth about the, <laughs> the effects, um, you see they end up with hundreds of billions in, in lawsuits. We saw that with the tobacco industry. They have hid the, the lung cancer effects for, for years. Eventually, it, it, it came right, right back on them. Same with the asbestos industry. Um, and so that just illustrates the risk that comes with this kind of, um, this kind of um, <clears throat> sort of fooling the, the public. That takes me back to the whole discussion of messy. Because where we are now, which is not great, I mean, looking ahead, it's not optimistic. And where we're going to get here, depending on what year you pick, it's going to be messy. We're going to suffer. Um, the economy is, is going to dry up in many places. What was the remark was uh, the United States will become a third world country, but the whole world will become a third world country 
or fourth? Do they have fourth world countries? Mm -hmm. That's true. And, you know, it's, it strikes me, though, that from what you were saying a minute ago, David, that, that we're going to have disruption. Disruption in our society, mm -hmm. in our relations, people-to-people -people relations. And a lawyer would be able to see that the courts would be clogged or, not, or dysfunctional mm -hmm. because the courts will not be able to handle all the disputes that arise out of the losses and damages that come from climate change. What will we do? What will we do? We have to start uh, acting. Like I said before, we have to start asking, first of all, uh, putting a price on carbon. I think that is essential. We have to. Uh, we have the solutions page in our website, volofoundation.org. But I think volofoundation.org. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, carbon price is inevitable. Uh, Dave knows about carbon price and how it will affect. Uh, and we need to start acting. It's not actually that complicated from a policy standpoint. I mean, we we all pay you know, you know x amount per month for the garbage man to pick up our garbage. We don't. Just throw the garbage into the street or in the neighbor's yard. It would be insane. That's what we're doing with, with carbon. So if you put a price on it, uh, then that will actually cause basic economics to, um, to, to clean up the... Uh, when, once we put the real price and see how expensive it is, then we move toward a cleaner economy. Well, I think it's going to change the economy. It is changing the economy, mm -hmm. right? It may be sometimes imperceptible if, in a given issue, but over time, that's the problem, you know, we have to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. That's why I appreciate, you know, you're updating your numbers. Because the dots, say, two years ago, say one thing. The dots now say another thing. And we have to see the trends so that we can figure out how things are changing. And that should be pretty scary. Why don't you go on more slides? Uh, what well, this graph shows, very interesting, is that the actual damages in, in the recent, recent decade, the damages done by fossil fuel emissions actually exceeds uh, the entire income of the fossil fuel industry. Um, so they're basically getting a free ride, causing, you know, making X in revenues, but doing more than those revenues and damages. It's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Next. And, um, and this is showing the, uh, the lawsuits that are starting to build uh, against the fossil fuel industries. So it started a, a few years ago uh, with a couple of cities. Um, now we've got New York City, Baltimore, Rhode Island um, joining the, the fight. So it's really mounting as, as, um, as people are, are understanding uh, the, the real truth of what fossil fuel companies have been doing. Yeah. I asked you before we started, you know, the data that you're collecting. Yeah and verifying and, and demonstrating and teaching people through the media and otherwise. I, I heard your NPR conversation. Oh, really, really thank terrific. you. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> the more the merrier, really. Um, you know, all that data, where does that go? Does that go to finding out how bad it is? Does it go to finding out, you know, how much worse it's getting or could get? Mm -hmm. Or does it go to, to identifying the kinds of things that we have to do to reverse this? Or is it all of the foregoing? I think it's all of the above. Yes, all of the above. And basically every number I showed you in the, in the slides is based on data. So it's, none of it's my opinion. It's showing, I mean, it's quantifying number of barrels you know, equals so many tons of CO2, uh, the connection between the warming, uh, the way hurricanes thrive in, in, um, in warmer conditions. Um, it's all data that I've showed. None of and it is zero opinion. Data in air pollution, data in water pollution, data in hurricanes. We focus more on hurricanes in these slides because of Florida is, is the hurricanes are more impactful there. All connected. But it's all connected. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. the quality of life that our kids and the future generations are going to have is not going to be compared to what we have right now. Yeah. So that's what we want to preserve. The quality of life. Earth is going to keep here. That it's going to evolve. They, it, nature knows how to evolve. It's us and the people that are going to go through bigger temperature changes, a, a immigration, like I said before, disruption, all the of, disruption all of all kind, and we have to adapt. So adaptation and mitigation are things that our constituents have to ask their candidates because it's coming, it's here, and we have to attack. We are in it, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had one more slide, David. 
Can we see that? Okay. Uh, really, we just wanted to present here what the, what, how you convert a price tag of, of the damages to a price, on a, a price per ton of carbon. So if you're going to price carbon, uh, we basically just got to look at the, uh, how the data shows how much damages have been done. We can see that, that the one trillion tons that we have um, put into the atmosphere is going to cause about $50 trillion in damages. That comes out to about $50 a ton, which is hard for people to comprehend. So what that comes out That's to a lot. per gallon of gas, it's 50 cents a gallon. Um, and, and that may move people to, if that's priced in, move people to electric vehicles. Um, you can see um, burning coal, um, it's five cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so it's, it's, it's not cheap, um, but if that, that's priced in, then all of a sudden it'll make the, you can see the renewables um, and nuclear in the, the, in the lower right corner are not, um, there's, no, there's no carbon damage. The transition to renewables is gonna generate jobs. It's gonna make the economy better. It has happened in other countries, in mm -hmm. Sweden, in Germany, in Canada, so mm -hmm. we can do it. If mm -hmm. they have done it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. But we have to have a political will to do it. I mean, this, this administration only a week ago uh, reversed uh, the Obama energy policy from renewable to coal. We're back mm -hmm. in coal. Yeah. Uh, when these things are happening in the environment, it's remarkable to think that. So uh, I want to ask you guys, I mean, you know, the, the kids you're talking about, they have to be activated. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All the people have to be activated. When they have these debates right now, they're going to have it, what, tonight and tomorrow? Tonight and tomorrow well, in Miami. That has to be an issue. And it, it wasn't in one of the questions, the climate change, they didn't want to debate climate change, but I know for a fact that they have people in front of the stations just asking and having billboards and all kind of uh, movement Good. activism to, to, for them to go into climate change. Good. It's so critical, and we must make people understand. And I hate to use the, um, the Charles Dickens ghost of Christmas future kind of analysis. You remember Scrooge is taken into the future. And he has mm -hmm. shown the future if he's, if he's not, you know, if he's not decent. Mm -hmm. um, and the future is very dire in, mm -hmm. in the, uh, was it, the Christmas Carol yeah. book by Charles mm -hmm. Dickens. So what is the dire result? If, if there was somebody, say a, a, a politician, a public official, who didn't get it, what mm -hmm. would you say to him or her about the future to show him that there's really no choice on this? I mean, well, you, you've got... Sea level rising from melting ice, so eventually these coastal, coastal cities will go underwater. I mean, it'll, the economy will just get worse and worse until we actually have the political will uh, to move away from fossil fuels. And then once we have that political will, then we can make the world better and better again. It's really critical. And, but and it's lives critical. will depend on like it. Like you yeah. said, we have to do it now. We can't wait. I'm going right. to say like Greta Thunberg say, I don't talk to those people. It's a fact. It's like you telling me your heart is not pumping uh, blood. It is. It's a fact. I'm not going to discuss it with you. Right. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't argue about yeah. silly, <laughs> exactly. silly things you like that. You just don't talk to those people. So what's the future for Volo Foundation? You guys are putting so much energy into this, and you're getting so much traction. You know, you have like taken off yeah, in the last all of couple a sudden, years, all we... these projects, you're <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so question, what is the future for you? How do you see the future unfolding, you know, in terms of your own growth and extension and in terms of your effect on, on this issue in society? Right now, it's, it's really presenting, the, it's analyzing and presenting the data so that people understand. And that's policymakers, voters, um, it's, it's generating that political will. And, and we'll keep sharing so, all our findings. We have climate correction uh, to the, uh, 2000, is on October 3rd, 2019. <laughs> I was already in 2020 because it's every year. We have it at UCF and we bring uh, the most amazing speakers, scientists to share, educate, and act and find solutions for climate change. A reaction from me then, you guys are working together. You're together. It's a great community when you have a husband and wife together. Together. <laughs> and then you're bringing other people into this community, yes. you know, by the carload. So now the community is bigger. And the community includes kids, yes. at least mm -hmm. six. At least. Maybe more. <laughs> no, six is enough. <laughs> Don't try it at home. So it's great to see that. It's great to see that community developing. You are a center in this whole movement. And I want to thank you for doing it. Thank you on behalf of the eight, nine billion people in the world. Okay. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Follow us at volofoundation.org. Yeah. Thank you, Tace. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, Jay. Aloha. Ooh.
Aloha. <laughs>